In this video, we're going to apply everything we've learned in the Fibonacci and trading video series so far to mark up a chart of Mattel from scratch. Mattel has earnings coming up, it's also had a nice pullback, and I'd like to see if today's move, this candle right here, is a good candle to enter. Have we crossed some key Fibonacci levels? Are we now making a move to the upside, and can we expect to see higher highs even beyond 2571? Now there's a simple four step process that I like to follow when I mark up any chart. This is to try and find Fibonacci clusters in a process driven approach. Step one is we start by drawing the retracements that's using our Fibonacci retracements tool, this one right here, for the largest active swing on our chart. Now if I zoom out, really for the largest active swing, we might want to be using that weekly time frame chart and switch over to the max available data here first. Inside of Mattel, the largest active swing that I can see is this swing high to this swing low. So let's use the retracements tool to draw that out. That swing high, swing low right down here. Let me make sure the right points are selected. If I zoom in, we've selected the high at 48.48, .48, and then our low is the wick of this low candle right down here. Using that, we have an instant roadmap for where we think price action is likely to go in this overall uptrend move. Currently, we've stopped at that 382 ratio. If I zoom in here, that 382 has been resistance one time, two times, three times, four times, before price has finally broken above it, and now we're looking for that 382 to act as support, previous resistance turning into support. Today's candle, this candle right here, if I narrow down to a daily time frame, has closed above that 382 ratio at 22.54. So as of right now, we've closed above the 382, we've reclaimed that zone, and it's really looking like we're starting to form a base here and make our move to the next Fibonacci ratio, our next stop in this roadmap, which is 27.48 or 27.50 rounded up to the upside. To the downside, if price were to completely reverse, we have 16.42 as our downside level, our next ratio. Now we move on to step two of our process of marking up this chart in which we're going to be drawing our downside Fibonacci support extensions. I'll use the Fibonacci extensions tool here, and let's start by first taking a look at the swing we currently have. That's this swing right here, and I'd like to find similar swings to this swing in this overall recent uptrend. That means I can start with using this low and start by comparing any one of these similar swings. Most of these earlier swings seem to be fairly small in terms of nature compared to, say, this current swing, compared to some of our more recent swings right here. So if you were to say take this swing high to this swing low, that looks a lot more similar to our current swing compared to say this swing right here. So using some of the similar swings, I see we have one, we have this swing right here, we have this swing as well, we have this swing as well. I think these are the four swings that are relevant to what price action is currently doing. So let's go ahead and mark those up. We'll use our swing high here, swing low as our point number two, and point number three is extrapolating from this swing high. If price were to make the same exact move to the downside, we would expect price to stop really near that 20.92 zone. So that's extension number one if we see an exact swing similar to this swing from this swing high. Now swing number two is this swing right here. So if I extrapolate that, point two, point three, that overlaps pretty nicely with that first swing. So we're seeing these two swings so far have been very similar in this overall uptrend. And if we did see a similar decline, that would stop around 21. Now we have two more swings left. So I'll take this swing high to this swing low, extrapolate that from this swing high. That swing, much more relevant, very much in play right now, 22.07. That's where price has more or less found support from, at least if today's candle is any sort of confirmation. Our next support, or the next swing rather, that we have to run is the last one. That's this right here, which gives us another downside level, which is in play 21.70. So these two swings have been fairly similar to what price action has currently done and where we so far have been bouncing off from. That now takes us into step number three, which is projecting the upside extensions. Now to keep my charts clean, I'm going to be projecting just the upside extensions of these two swings that are currently in play that seem to be similar to what price action is currently doing. So last time we made this swing low, we then moved up this much before falling back down or pulling back. So I'm going to use that same swing low to swing high 
to project from the swing low that we have right here. That gives us an upside extension for resistance near 25.07. That's number one. The number two upside extension that we can run is for this swing, which was also similar. That gave us that 21.70 level. And if we project to the upside here, so that's swing low to swing high, projected from this swing low, that gives us a swing high extension of 28.08 as our next resistance area. That also tends to overlap somewhat nicely with 27.50, giving us this little zone, if you will, this region where we expect price action to stop around. So now that's steps one, two, and three complete. Now in terms of triggers, before we move on to steps four, is if you remember, once price action hits our downside Fibonacci support extensions, we're using either that 30 minute, the one hour, or even the four hour chart to try and confirm that move to the downside using overbought, oversold indications. So if I come in first on Mattel to a 30 minute chart, and I load in the edge signals indicator, that's our overbought, oversold indication that we like to use, that's a free indicator for all Volatility Box members. You can download it using the link in the description box. We see we had one, two, three, four, five, and six confirmations of these levels off of the 30 minute time frame chart. On the one hour time frame chart here, we've had one and two confirmations of these levels right down here once we've reached them. And on the four hour time frame chart, we had one and two confirmations of these levels once we've reached them. So across the board here, we've had triggers before today's candle confirming these downside levels, these downside extensions inside of Mattel. Now coming back in, we know Mattel is an active trade. We know this has been a confirming move. Even on the daily time frame chart here, we've seen the edge signal give us an overbought, oversold confirmation. The only step left here now is trying to predict any near-term retracements for near-term shorter swings that we have. For that, I switch back to the retracements tool and our shorter swing that I can currently see is this swing high to this swing low. Using the retracements tool for that, if I come up and see where that 1272 and the 1618 come in, that's again near that 50% mark. So this area right here is really starting to act as one sort of region where we think price is likely to go to the upside. Another place which overlaps with our Fibonacci extension to the upside is also this zone right here near that 786 and that 100% to the upside. So let's go ahead and clean our charts up just a little bit and hide some of the levels that we don't care about. I'm going to again use that control plus click feature to hide some of those levels. So this 236 no longer really in play, so I can control plus click to hide that area. I can also hide this 382. So to the upside here, we have 50%, we have the 618, we have the 786, which overlaps with this zone right here. And then we have our upside areas as well, near that 1272 and that 1618. If you wanted to hide the 1272 and maybe just use that 50% mark to try and keep things a little cleaner, you could hide that level as well. Now, if we do a quick recap here before we close this out, we started with a blank chart of Mattel. This is a completely blank canvas. We marked it up using a four-step process, really starting out with a zoomed out basis off of our largest swing. We then got narrower and narrower as we got closer to step four, where step four was using just our near-term swing. Off of that swing, we then have both downside support areas. That's using our extensions tool, this zone right here. We have our upside target area, which is really near that 2750 mark. That's where everything anchors around. We have areas where we think price is likely to hit resistance along the way. And we have all of our triggers that have currently been met confirming that this zone right here we think is likely to hold and at least take us into that 50% mark of 23.63. Each one of those triggers hit before today's candle and today's candle has now confirmed even the daily edge signal indicator really confirming that we expect these zones to hold and make a move towards a greater target of 2750. So that's how you mark up a chart using Fibonacci and that's how you apply the two tools that we've been covering so far in the Fibonacci trading video series. If you haven't already, be sure to check out parts one, parts two, and parts three as I think they help build up to this video right here where we get some hands-on application inside of Mattel. Hope this video was helpful to bring everything together. Take care everyone and we'll see you in the next update.